that you had the opportunity to hop on today. It is about to be. Um, girl, you already knew it was coming. We just had to get these schedules aligned, and it was inevitable. Thank you so much for having me. So let's start with. I like to always start with like how I met the person that um, that I have on here. So you know what I'm saying. We met at Winston. Well, on the way to Winston. <laughs> Yep. Well, I was on my way. You were on the way to Winston. I was already at Winston. And um, I think it was like through Facebook or probably yeah, one of the groups. Yeah. It was something like that. And I was like, look, I'm about to be new on here. I need to know what's up. You know, do you like it? And he was like, yeah, I like it. And she was like, it's good. It's small. But, you know, I was like, okay. And next thing I know. We was hanging out, and that was in 2007. Yes. That's 13 years, girl. That is crazy. Super crazy, super crazy. But I am super excited to have you on today. We're going to go ahead and get this thing rolling. So everybody, if you are on here, please do not forget to like our page, Be the Entrepreneur. And We'll be putting this in the comment section for you guys. And please feel free, if you have any questions, please feel free to type it in. We will be answering questions live throughout the show. But below, you will find our information. So, first, does everybody have a drink? Because you know it's not a happy hour without your drink. I got mine. Check, check. <laughs> All right. So we are going to roll right into today. So first today, I want to thank you guys for coming in for talking out virtual happy hour. It is a solution based virtual chat to support minority entrepreneurs. And today we have Ebony with the Bossy Brand. And we're going to be talking about the topic of how to handle business copycats. Protecting your business and bossing up. So this was a really exciting topic for me because I know as a charlatan and as an entrepreneur in Charlotte, I've seen a lot of duplications in business. I've seen um, different people in the same market. I've kind of seen how all that looks and how certain markets can get oversaturated or somebody could just downright just kind of take your idea. I've seen that happen. So I'm excited to have Emily on today to talk about her personal experience and, you know, just give us some tips on how you could protect your brand as you continue to grow it. So the agenda today, of course, we're going to do the welcome, some housekeeping. We're going to do our drink check, cocktail of the day, topic of the day, question and answer, and we will close out. Um, as you know, I am Brandy Fox and I am the owner of Be The Entrepreneur Consulting Agency and we specialize in helping startup businesses Start and transition their business into profit-making businesses through four easy steps. So if you are a newer aspiring entrepreneur, please do like, follow, and subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube page at b.theentrepreneur. Thank you. And housekeeping, feel free to ask any questions live. I know I said that earlier, but I want to make sure we get some engagement. Um, Ebony has a lot of good information outside of this topic of the day. She is an amazing entrepreneur. So as we continue to talk, definitely use the opportunity to ask her any questions that you may have business-wise. Um, I definitely feel like between the both of us, we'll definitely be able to give you a lot of information to help start, grow, transition, or wherever you are um, in the startup process of your business. If you are looking to get a recap of this video, the full recap, all you have to do is subscribe at www.bethentrepreneur.com. There's a box as soon as you get on there. Just put in your email. You'll be subscribed. And you'll also get one of our work e-templates. They'll get emailed to you. So that's all free of charge. And next, we're going to roll into our cocktail of the day, which is the Black Russian. The Black Russian is 1.5 ounce vodka, 3 4 ounce coffee liqueur, and you can add some Martino cherries. Did I say that right? Marcino? Marcino. Okay, Marcino cherries. 
Um, I'm not really a coffee drinker in my drink. How about you, Ebony? Do you like coffee in yours? I love coffee, but not in my alcohol. Mm-mm. Me neither. It kind of mm-hmm. do something to my stomach, right? Like that dairy with the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought it was just me. Okay, cool. So that's the cocktail of the day. Quick mix. Mix it up with some ice. Toss it up. Add the cherries if you like it. If not, you can drink it just like that. And now we are going to go into our drink check. So, Ebony, what are you drinking on this evening? So, this is what I'm drinking. Um, this is some wine that I got from Children's Vineyard. Um, it's uh, like not all. Did you boot me? <laughs> it's like a muscadine white wine. Um, of course, it's sweet because I don't like dry red. Um, and then I put a little bit of orange juice in it and some like peach syrup just to kind of give it a little fruity vibe. That's about it. Well, cool. That sounds good. I have not been to a, a vineyard yet, and I've been seeing some people going, and I definitely want to uh go to one soon. So I definitely got to. Oh, it's getting cold now. I got to wait till the spring. Mm. Oh, it's yeah. not, it's not some of them. Have- Indoor tasting, like they have like an indoor tasting. Oh, uh, wines and stuff inside. But I definitely do want to go back in the spring, summertime to kind of get a feel for like what the outdoor. Is oh like. yeah, I know that'd be good because cool. you heard you get like the tour and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, girl. Okay, spring twenty twenty one. We in there. All right. <laughs> so. We are going to roll right into our topics of the day because they are amazing and I don't want to wait any longer. I'm ready to get all the tea on everything. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the difference between helping out versus giving too much information. So (laughs) I know that, you know, outside of um, a part of the Bossy brand, you do do consultations, you work with other small businesses. So you know how sometimes, and I know I experience it as well, but you know how sometimes you have people that's like, hey, girl, I got a quick question. You know what I'm saying? And then you have um, the times where you give too much to the point where they don't feel the need to follow up or book your services. So how do you separate the difference between helping out, giving a little bit of information and balancing enough to keep that professional boundary? Girl, girl. first of all, (laughs) I am naturally somebody that loves to help others. So usually when people hit me up, like I just started charging for pick my brain sessions, And it's just like, usually when people hit me up and it's something quick, you know, like I can normally just answer, respond back and, you know, give them something, you know, that they can, you know, use or whatever. Mm hmm. And I and and it's usually the people that I know that will do their research or people that you know I know you know kind of like their backstory where they coming from you know and I know like okay yeah she didn't do her research you know she just might need a little bit of help here and there but then it's those people that ain't did no research that act like they don't know what Google is and they just kind of want to know well how you do this what do I need to do you know and they have like all these questions. And one of the things that I do is normally I'm replaying like conversations in my head. Like we already talked about this. So why are you asking me this again? I already know from there you have not done your research. So at that point, you know, I try to stay professional. I try to, you know, say, hey, well, look it up or I'll just send them the link because I don't got time to be explaining that, you know, or, you know, kind of like repeating myself. I hate repeating myself. So, um, Typically, it's just, you know, discernment and just knowing, you know, like who you can help and who you can't really help because the people that you can't truly help have not done their research. Right. And I'm glad that you talked about the research because I feel like um, when it goes into starting a business, even before you get to the helping part, you really got to do your research. I think sometimes and I know for me, I've had clients that, you know, I've had the same thing research wasn't done so they're coming to me as a blank canvas and i'm like first of all you know if you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to start a business the first thing you have to do is research and see if the business is for you like you know what i'm saying everything ain't for everybody like ebony you remember before we went live we was talking about how when i first started pamper us i was up in the kitchen whipping the work on the shea butter and i realized within like six months that 
Whip and shea butter was not for me. I am not with the process, so I pivoted right on out of there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about pivoting your business as well, because I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs like kind of stay away from. They want to kind of keep the same business model and knowing when to pivot and how to pivot is very important in innovating and growing your business. So we're definitely going to talk more about that later. So, Ebony, going back to the helping out versus giving too much information, what do you I know you said discernment, but if you can give like three tips on the best ways that somebody can kind of put that boundary in place between helping and giving too much information, what will be those three tips? Well, I like when I just, um, but when I think about myself, like I usually factor in like my time. So if it's cutting in between the time that I have to do something to work on my business or to do something for myself, then that's one of like my my things that I look at. Like how much time is it taking for me to take time out of my day to answer your questions? Um, again, have they done their research? You can always tell by the conversation if a person has or has not done their research. And then three, um, you know, just, I guess I would have to say probably just kind of like feeling the person out, seeing like how eager they are to receive the information, like, and just figuring out, okay, like now that you got the information, what are you going to do with it? Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do do with what I'm giving you, you know, and just in conversation, just talking to people and, you know, asking those probing questions. And just kind of going from there and seeing what they do. A lot of times what I do, if I'm helping somebody or like my clients that I know, like that actually go through my site and they book me for consultations, I'm following mm -hmm. 30 days. We're going to touch bases again to see like, OK, well, what have you done? If you haven't done anything from the 30 days that we from the last time that we talked, um, then I know you're not really serious. You're not for real. But if you've done your research, you know, you, you know, well, Ebony, this is what I came up with, you know, then I'm going to be more eager to help you because I know that you want me. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that ties to like effort, like you have to give some type of effort. And I think that sometimes um, I don't want to say people expect for you to give them everything. But I think sometimes, especially when you like you a given person or, you know, for me, you know, a lot of my information you can catch for free right on my pages. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just how I am. Like my goal is really to, you know, grow the people, grow everybody. So I like your three facts. Um, so just to recap, if you did just join us. What we just talked about is how to um, take more control of your time, especially if you're getting a consultant. Even small businesses, like when you're looking out for your family, friends, you know how sometimes we look out, you know, make sure that it's not cutting into your brand time and make sure that you take control of that. And like my homegirl told me earlier, you know, sometimes don't be afraid to say no. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to say no. Um, sometimes that no can be a, a good go. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, I don't know, but for me, I get a feeling when I'm working with people or, you know, like people that I've just met, I typically get like a vibe off of them. And if you kind of like asking me too much early on, then I don't think I'm really <laughs> off the rip. Like you're going to be, I hate to say it, but you're going to be a problem somewhere down the road. Like I just feel that. So normally, you know, I kind of go off of my energy too. I, I should have threw that in there. Like I go off my energy and what the vibe saying. Oh no, you said that. You said that consistently. <laughs> like the energy. Um, yeah, it, it's okay to say no, and that's something that I'm realizing because I used to like want to help everybody. Like I really believe in giving out free game, like because it's just so much out here. But also at the same time, I do understand that you have to charge what you worth. So. Exactly. But that girl, that's like, you know, that's a whole another discussion in itself. That can be a whole show <laughs> on just charging what you were. But we're going to stick on topic. So like I said, if you just joined us, we talked about the top three tips that Ebony with the bossy brand would give um, to kind of separate the take control of your time. Um, so number one would be realizing how much time is this extra task going to take? Is this um, is it worth your time? Is it an investment that you're willing to make? 
And these are a couple of steps that she gave to determine if it's worth your time. Number one, the person that you're helping out or looking out for, have they done any research prior to you guys meeting together or are they expecting you to come in and kind of help them with a uh, like a blank canvas? Because they kind of make a difference too. If I have somebody that's coming to me and they're like, hey, I've done this, I've done this, but I'm kind of stuck on this. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I got you. But when I come to somebody like, you know, I want to start this business, where do I start? I'm like, all right, we got to set up a consultation. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's really important. And thirdly, are you going to use the information? I, I'm going to tell you what, I take, I take really, I take a lot of pride in my time because it's limited. So I feel like um, when I do help people out and then like we meet again, and you asked me about the same thing um, we kind of met about. It's like, what happened in the last meeting? You know what I'm saying? And not saying it in a bad way, but just saying, like, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be, like, continuously moving forward. And I think that's what people fall short at. You know what I'm saying? They kind of pump the brakes a little bit. Right. So um, are you going to use the information that's given to you? So those are the three tips that she's given on how to grow your brand. So now, Ebony, let's talk about what happens uh, with business business copycats, and we know what a business copycat is. That is somebody, um, and you have a you have a, you have a few different kinds. You have the kind, you have the type of copycats that pick your brain for information. So they try to get you know, they just keep asking questions, asking questions. Then you have some that just downright, you know, they like, hey, I'm about to do your business and you know, this is what it is. And then you got something to try to sneak and do it and you just happen to find out. So how do you handle that? Um, and I know it's something that you know about. So how would you handle that? Or how did you handle that? Oh, which one do I want to tackle first? Okay, so for the, the people that... <sighs> that low-key, you know, want to know, like, well, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Those types of people I tend to handle with a long-handed spoon because especially if I know we're in the same industry, again, I don't mind helping you whatsoever. But Google, Google is always there. Um and it's just like, you know, I, I get that, you know, there's enough to go around for everybody. And like I always say, your market is not my market, whatever. But, you know, it, it still kind of goes back to, well, are you doing your research as an entrepreneur? Because if, you, if you're doing your research, then you should already know where I'm headed or where I'm going or where I got what from, mm -hmm. you know. And so, again, I don't mind <clears throat> connecting you. You know, because, again, I try to get out of the whole competition, like seeing competition. Like, I feel like I honestly feel like and I mean, I don't mean to sound cocky, but, you know, I honestly feel like, you know, it's true. Like I am my own competition. Like there's nobody out here that can compete with me or can touch me because I have my own ingredients, my own sauce, my own recipe for how I do my thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just weren't born with that. <laughs> So, um, you know, again, I just handle those type of people, you know, with a long handed spoon, especially if we're in the same market or, you know, like same, we're doing the same thing. Um, now for the ones who just blatantly, <clears throat> girl, listen, when I say it can be very discouraging and sometimes it just makes you want to, you know, it just kind of takes you to a place where for, well, for me, you know, it just kind of takes me to a place where I feel like I don't even want to do this no more because like you were not thinking about this until you saw me doing it, you know. But then I kind of learned to I grew up and I learned again. God put it in my heart to do what I do. So mm -hmm. what I do it's done with purpose. It's done with intention. So you might see me over here busting out 400 orders, you know, and you might say, okay, well, let me put something on the shirt. Come on, 400 orders. Don't just slide that out like that ain't no little bit of big. That ain't no little bit of big. You're, you may not produce the same amount of numbers as I produce because I'm operating in my purpose and you're not. So when I see things like that and I see people that, you know, have like blatantly copied, 
you know, things that I'm doing and, you know, stuff, I, I just, I have to eliminate and block out all distractions. So I'm going to, if I'm following you on Instagram, I'm going to mute you. Um, I'm going to hide your post because you're distracting me and keeping me from what it is I need to be doing. And that's operating in my purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, thirdly, um, so I created a t-shirt. I had a graphic designer that I worked with, um, to create my melanin design. And um, I had somebody just straight up jack my design, like somebody locally, like just. <laughs> and I've seen the concept before, so I wasn't mm -hmm. the fact that you know you replace the map for the A in the word. You know, I wasn't tripping on that. I was tripping off the fact that you straight up jack my whole design. Like how these people that be printing T-shirts be jacking Nike and jack. Right. And then you go into the pink store and you like, well, I seen this. And they like, we don't sell that. So somebody copied it. What? So, yeah, girl, where you been at? Girl, I'm not there. <laughs> not there. <laughs> That's so crazy. But um, I had somebody like straight up jack my design. And it was discouraging because I had people that I thought were on my side that, you know, have purchase for me that you know have seen the design and they were supporting this person and you know like pro posting the shirt and everything that they were doing and even though they they use the word melanin and then they put their another word into it you know i'm just still like that's my design mm -hmm. so it was because you know you got ebony and then you got ivory and this was before i grew up <laughs> I went on and I got me a cease and desist letter. And I, As you should. And I created an attorney. I made up an attorney right there on McDowell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was just like, you know, this design is, you know, trademarked by somebody. You know, you cannot use it. You need to stop all like right. All like all cease all, you know. Uh, sales. And I was like, if you don't, then, you know, we're going to have to take this to court. And I felt so like, I felt so petty for doing that. But at the same time, that was my baby. That was my brand, you know? So I was just like, I'm going to do what I got to do to protect me because you're not going to, you know, you're not going to do that. And so that's when I learned, okay, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to operate in business, you need to go about stuff differently. So it was things that I had to learn, you know, for myself to protect myself in situations like that. And again, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. But, you know, that's when I took my break off of, you know, like doing everything. I was just like, OK, I don't want to put nothing else out there unless it's done correctly or mm -hmm. because people can snatch your idea up like that. And it was just it hurt. It really did hurt. It hurt because like people didn't, you know, in talking to other people about it, they didn't understand why I was so mad. And I what? Was, yeah. girl, when you told me, I felt it. Girl, I was mad with you. Girl, I knew. They didn't understand. And I was just like, y'all, like, I paid the designers. Like, I busting my tail, getting shirts printed up, getting things made. And then for some investments, people, copy me. You just gonna hop on the end part then. You're gonna hop on the end part and copy everything. But I think, like you said, Ebony, it goes back to, you know what I'm saying? Nobody can do what you do better. And like, we see your brand. Like when you came back, I remember when you told me, you said, Brandy, when I come back into the game, you was like, I'm coming back so strong. Like, ain't nobody going to be able to mess with me. Like, and that's what you did, girl. When you came back out with the Bossy Brand 2020, girl, you like blew it out the water. Like, you ain't give no, you ain't even get nobody a chance to copy you if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, when you come so strong, it's like, where do I start? That's the thing. You have to be constantly evolving. And that's what I learned. Like, you can't sit stagnant on one design or, you know, one thing. Like, you have to keep moving. Like, yeah, I'm doing this this week. I'm doing water bottles this week. But next week, I'm doing purses or I'm doing, you know, whatever. Right, right. You try to. Because I can't give you a chance to see what I'm doing to copy me. I just can't. And I mean, I've had people, and don't get me wrong, like, especially with everybody being at home and, you know, everybody kind of being online, you know, I get that you're going to have 
ideas and you're going to cross paths with people you know especially if you know you kind of have like a similar passion or purpose or whatever mm-hmm. girl i've had people like i put out an e-guide i had somebody go directly to the same site where my e-guide is housed and now they doing an e-guide and so i just be thinking like is this coincidence or are you yeah. in my stuff you know but that is so now that's just blatant. like see that's and that's just so disrespectful that is so disrespectful. But the thing about it is, is people want instant gratification. So people see you like, again, you see me pushing out 400 orders, but you don't know what it took for me to get there. You don't know that two, three years ago, somebody stole my design and I was depressed and, you know, all this other stuff. Like, you don't know that. You don't know, you know, none of my backstory. So I just wish that, you know, like when it does come to business and, you know, people just kind of like having different ideas, think of ways that you can separate yourself apart from the next person. You know, again, keep evolving, keep growing, but don't just blatantly copy somebody else's work or, you know, do it because you see them winning and you think, okay, well, I can do this too. Because nine times out of 10, you can't. Girl, girl, (laughs) girl. Girl, they don't know the background work. They just kind of see the top. They watch a couple YouTube videos. But, bruh, it's a whole nother level of process of entrepreneurship that you have to have to be able to buy yourself and you work too, to be able to take orders, brand, market, website design. Like, girl. Like, the way I want to brand on <laughs> hey girl, tell what you mean. Girl, it's sacrifices that you have to pay. Like, girl, because I was tearing the apartment, tearing them up. Girl, yeah. Yeah. You girl. Printers and everything. <laughs> girl, 100 pages. <laughs> ratchet, ratchet. Girl, that was back in the day. I changed shit. We don't do all that. But hey, you got to make it, though. You got to make it, though. And I'm glad, you know, the thing that I like best uh, about what you said is that, you know, it comes with another topic of entrepreneurship is resiliency. Like, like you said, it is not instant gratification. Like, to be an entrepreneur, you got to be willing to put in that work. Like, you got to be willing to, like, some days not have no orders and some days have 20 orders. Like, you got to be prepared because it fluctuates like that. Until you get to that point of stability, which if you work your business full time, like if you do what you're supposed to do, real talk. And I tell like my clients this, like if you do what you're supposed to do, you can really start and grow a business like in a perfect like timeline. Not saying perfect, but like by year five, your business should be some type of stable. Like if you've been working your business full time, legitly for five years, you should be ready to do that business full time. And if you're not then that means that you you're missing the mark on something, and it's not saying it's wrong, but that means you need to step back and reevaluate what you need to do to be able to do it full time if that's your goal. And that's not everybody's goal, though. Some people like doing it as a hobby on the side, in addition to their full time, because they don't want to leave their full time. They don't want to take that risk, and there's nothing wrong with that. And you talked about that earlier, actually, on your page. You was talking about, you know how it's okay to like still work full time and be an entrepreneur, like jumping out there. You don't have to. um, I would say like two years ago, I got into the point where I just felt like I'm a, you know, still here. You know, I, I, I I remember, you know, I was a customer. Girl. I love my little EV hair co, and then it grew into bossy bundles. But I sold hair because when I got to UNCC, I had like exhausted a lot of my financial aid. So I was like, okay, well, I got to figure out a way to pay this tuition so I can get my degree. And I saw how much money I made selling hair. And at the time, it was more than what I made working at Wells. And so I was just like, I need to figure out how I can quit my job full time and sell hair. But I wasn't looking at the fact of, okay, well, what are you putting out? Like, mm-hmm. it's good on paper, but what are you putting out? Like, what are your shipping costs? What does it cost mm-hmm. for these different vendors, you know? And so, you know, I got into a funk where I was just like, I want to quit my job. Like, I don't want to work. I, you know, I don't need y'all. Girl. <laughs> 
Hey, baby got bold. <laughs> baby got bold. That guy did. But he opened my eyes and he was like, sis, like, and I just realized, you know, it's not easy. Like, you know, we see a lot of people on social media, you know, doing things and they're living the lifestyle that we wish that we could live or could afford. But for me personally, I'm OK with working my nine to five because, like I said, I need health insurance. I like Come on. My nine to five actually funds a lot of the stuff that, you know, I'm able to do with my business. So I tell people, you know, it's OK to be a corporate preneur. Me. Come on, corporatepreneur. You work your corporate job, and then when you get off, you you know you do your entrepreneurship thing. It's okay. Like everybody can't can't do entrepreneurship full time. And it's okay. And um, when you are ready, and people always ask, like I know for me, a lot of people ask, you know, how do you know when you're ready? You'll know when you're ready. Number one, you'll know because you'll feel ready. You It'll get to a point, y'all, where you can't take another day on that job. Like, if you go in there one more time, it might like it might not end well. So you just be like, you know what? <laughs> let me just go ahead and put in this notice. Let me, you know, let me just go ahead and put in this notice. But outside of that, real talk, just being prepared, you guys. Just being, you know, it, all it took, like, it took me six months to prepare to transition out know what i'm saying that was based on where i was at the time for you it might be a year it might be 18 months whatever that time limit is it's cool it's worth it just work it and during that time of growth use that to grow your business perfect your system so that way when you go full time you ain't got to worry about doing nothing extra you ain't got to worry about ubering or doing postmates and no shade to none of that because i've done that like a few years ago it wasn't even that long ago i was out here ubering you know what i'm saying so not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying if you properly prepare and save and really work your business during your time of working full time, then by the time it's time for you to leave, you will have enough money to where you won't have to do anything extra. You can focus on your business and grow your brand quicker. Exactly. So that's what I have to say about that. I am the side hustle queen. Like I'm Come on, side hustle queen. I said I was going to change it to the... Uh, yeah, like I just don't, I don't ever want to have to go back to what I, I've i been through in the past. And, you know, I don't, I don't ever want to struggle. So if I got to do Uber, Postmates, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart. Girl, what? Girl, walk the dogs. I don't even like dogs, girl. I, girls don't care.com. Girl, I was like, what can I do? Because all the babysitting jobs was taken. You know, everybody like to be a babysitter. Right. I was like, shoot, I don't even like dogs. But you know what? I'm about to walk these two chihuahuas. I ain't never do it. I just put it. But girl, you know, I don't got real. <laughs> but um, okay, so I know that you mentioned this a little bit earlier, so I want to pivot back to this. But I know we talked about being in like oversaturated markets or how to really stand out. Because that's what you were saying. When you get into it, you got to stand out. And I can honestly say one thing I love about you is like you would jump into a market full brand. Like you don't even like hair at the time when you came out, it was popular, but you was able to get into the market and make your money. Like you said, to the point that you was making enough as full time. And the same thing with the bossy brands. So how do you stand out? Or what are some tips that you can give on how a business can stand out no matter what? First and foremost, starts with your if you customer don't customer service, come on, girl. Let me put this in all caps. If you don't have customer service piece in in place, you might as well just hang it up. Like if you don't want to work with people, if you don't want to deal with different types of people, you might as well hang it up. Because really that's that's gonna be the number one thing when it comes to business and standing out. Um another thing, again, you have to keep evolving, like you have to keep trying to create fresh ideas, you know, making yourself stand apart from the next person or the next company that is, you know, doing something similar to what you're doing. Because, I mean, if they can, I always look at it like, okay, well, if I'm selling water bottles and my water bottles are $30, but this person is selling water bottles for $10, like why, why are they going to come shop with me and I'm more expensive, you know? So what I did was I created a way to make mine more unique. And so in doing so, you know, that's what's going to, you know, retain and gain customers and, you know, new people, because what you're doing is more unique than what the next person or what the next business may be doing. So it's 
all about evolving. It's all about having that customer service piece in place. And then again, it's just being passionate. Like if you're truly passionate about something, you are giving it your all, girl. You're gonna get if you're passionate about something, girl. Passion to change the game. Yeah, you're you're gonna give it your all. So like, y'all know how I feel about Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I want to give you that full experience. Like I want to do it how you know Beyonce would do it, or you know how somebody that you know, you just kind of know like okay I'm in good hands like I already know she's gonna wow me with her her packaging or she's gonna wow me with you know this whole experience like you're getting experience when you do business with me so you know that's I mean those are just the three key things that I can think of when it comes to separating yourself from the net. I definitely appreciate those were amazing and if anybody just joined us I'm gonna go over. Those real quick, her top, the Bossy Brands top three tips to stand out in your market. Number one, customer service. Y'all, call these people back. 24 hours, 48 hours max. Y'all don't know how many calls I get, like, for my for my business, my mobile massage business, Pamper Us. Y'all, I get so many people that's just excited that we called them back, legitly. Like, I'm so excited that you called me back. I'm so excited that you emailed me. And I think that's so crazy. I'm like, that's basic principle number one, mm -hmm. communication. So yeah. if you have a business, I always say calling somebody back, following up within 24 hours is key, 48 hours max. And make sure that you have a way that they know this. So that way when they submit your form, you should have something to say, hey, we'll follow up within 24 to 48 hours. Or like you, Ebony, with the Bossy brand, like when I bought my shirts, when I just bought my T-shirts, it said, hey, allow this many weeks to this many weeks to ship it so okay i know off the rip this is but this is how long i got so just communicate be open call your clients back that's your money that's how you grow your business so number one customer service numero dos is stay innovative and continue to grow your brand y'all you cannot be doing the same thing i don't care if you're a beautician if you're in a car wash game Switch it up. You better specialize in something great. Like, I know one girl, all she do is full box. That's it. She the bomb. She can knock you in and out in about three and a half hours. That's it. Don't ask her box braids. You know what I'm saying? Just perfect what you need to do. Stay innovative. Oh, wait. That's the opposite. Stay innovative and grow your brand. Girl, I said she can do it. That ain't innovative. But y'all know what I'm saying. So lastly, we got be passionate about your business. Um, if you know me uh, personally or even on here, and if you know definitely if you know Ebony, um, you know that the grind never stops. So we love what we do. We love being entrepreneurs. And even though we're two different type of entrepreneurs, the passion and the love that we have, um, you know, it really helps us keep driving and keep pushing to get our goals. So those are the top three tips. So Lastly, our last little key point for tonight, and I feel like this is really important, especially with the holiday season, COVID, all these distractions out here. So how do you pivot your business model? So like when all that stuff happened and you came back, what are some tips that you can give a business on pivoting, um, pivoting to grow? I guess we can go there. Mm. That is tough for me because I struggled with pivoting my business um, around June, July. And I was just kind of like, I don't know, it might be, the bossy brand might be done, you know? Right, right. Again, like, okay, well, what am I going to do from here? But I think, again, it's just being in the know, you know, kind of knowing what's hot, what's not for your, your avenue. Um, and then just, you know, being willing to just kind of take those chances. I think that's what it was for me. Like, I took a chance when I... Kept saying I was going to post a sale. I was going to post a sale. And I finally just did it. You know, I didn't know that it was going to take off the way it did. But I just took that chance and just kind of moved out there with it. And I think a lot of times we overthink. Don't overthink. Like a lot of times we are constantly overthinking like, OK, well, what should be my next move or what should I do next? Or, you know, what am I going to do? And you just you kind of waste a lot of time overthinking. So do your research again, you know, see what people in, you know, like uh, feel like people that are in similar um, businesses as you see what they're doing. You know, and then just kind of like, OK, again, make it your own see how you can maybe take something from them, like a nugget or so from them and pivot your brand. 
uh, yeah, you know, just flip it, make it your own. That's it. That's really it. <laughs> um, you know, I like to follow um, like Mia Ray and Ronnie a lot, you know, and I just kind of see how they do. So I was just like, OK, after studying them, how can I implement some of this stuff for the Bossy brand? And so it works again when you make it your own. But, um, you know, other than that, I think. Again, I do struggle with pivoting and I'm always I'm a doubter. Like I doubt myself a lot. So I, I feel like why you always winning out here, chick. Good for me to talk about pivoting because I don't even know how where to start. But <laughs> I just go with the flow. Like I'm an Aquarius, so I just go with the flow. <laughs> That's it. No, but I feel you. I can, I know personally, I know that COVID, especially owning a mobile massage business, girl, COVID was definitely like, uh, like it smacked me in the face. I ain't even gonna lie. Like when you go from like all these clients to like, for like 45 days, you can't touch, you can't serve nobody. Like it was just so crazy. Cause it's like, you know, you in the, you just, you in the unknown. So for me pivoting my business, cause a lot of services that I offer, I can't offer anymore. So it's like, I can't let my bit, like I didn't put almost 10 years in this thing. So I can't let it die. So it's like, how can I switch my brand up to be able to still um, have my base? Cause it's all about your foundation. And that's one thing you don't want to forget when you pivot is your foundation. Why you started your business, all that stuff. For me, it was massage therapy. So I just kind of built my brand back around that. So I say it to say, you know, my tips for pivoting is, to know where you're trying to go. That's the first step in pivoting because you can't really turn if you don't know which way to turn. Right. So the first thing plan, first thing you should do is write out a game plan. If you're trying to pivot your business, write your, um, start with the end in mind. Where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. How long do you want to take to get there? So for example, if you own a shoe company, you like, you know what? I only got two style, two types of style of shoes. By the end of the year, I want six. You work on that. Get a plan in place. Boom. Once you're ready, pivot your business to this. Pivot your business to that. So I say the most important thing is to have a plan in place um, before pivoting. That is absolutely good. And see, again, I'm I'm one of those people where I go with the flow. So I'm just like, okay, I might have a plan one day. I might not have a plan. Why am I not like it? Yeah, it works for me. That's just how I am. Like, but for somebody else, you know, I definitely agree. It's always important to plan and you don't have a vision in mind. And don't be scared, y'all. Don't be scared. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know the unknown, especially in entrepreneurship, especially if you just start and like, I know it can be so scary. I know it can be so intimidating. But I'm telling you, once you jump out, y'all, it's like you go and you just go. You know, you're going to hit some hurdles. You bust them things like, ah, like that. Okay, look, I ain't run track, but I was on the track team. You know, it's real quick. <laughs> so hop some hurdles real quick, y'all, and just keep on going real talk. Um, Because it's not going to be easy, but if you grind it out, it's definitely worth it. And, you know, and grind it out the way you want to. Like I like we talked about before, if you still full time, Ebony can tell you that's cool. You can still work it. There is sacrifices because your time is definitely limited. Mm-hmm. But you can still be a full time employee and work your dreams. You right. know what I'm saying? And if you're a full-time entrepreneur or you're looking to transition out, just have a plan, y'all, and you can legit do it. Um, Miss Ebony, I want you, before we close out, tell them a little bit about where they can find you, what you can do. Tell them all about the Bossy brand because they need to know. So um, the Bossy brand is just like me. Um, it's, it's a multifaceted brand. You know, I do a lot of different things. Um, but you can find me at www.thebossybrand.com, um, as well as on Instagram, The Bossy Brand. And then my personal page is, of course, Bossy. Um, so you can connect with me there um, on any of those platforms. It'll connect you to my Facebook, my Twitter, all of that. Um, but yeah, The Bossy Brand, like I, I dibble and dabble in uh, social media marketing and Consulting. Um, I do t-shirts. I do cute water bottles. I do real cute necklace. Like it's just, it's no limit to what I do because again, I do believe in you know just having multiple streams of income. So, right, it's all about the money. 
out. It is. It really is. <laughs> Um, and for me, y'all already know Brandy Fox would be the entrepreneur. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to another Talk It Out session. In two weeks, you guys, we will be on here with Mr. Yamin Thomas. He's going to be talking to us about how to get your research together. Ebony talked about it earlier, but he's going to give you the tips on how to prepare your brand for marketing, how you do the marketing research, how to research your target market, and how to use that to start getting money for your business before you even launch it. So we got some tips, 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 tips. Make sure you follow at Be The Entrepreneur and Ebony at The Bossy Brand. And you guys have a great night. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Y'all have a good night. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye.